<laughs> That's what I love about you, Charlene. You're always laughing. You're always smiling. Usually, like, well, I mean, you see the good side. That's it. <laughs> Charlene. So, Charlene, what is your title here? I'm the communications manager for the birthplace of country music. Uh, unbelievable. And the birthplace of country music is the parent nonprofit of Bristol Rhythm and Roots Reunion Music Festival, uh, the birthplace of country music museum, which is an affiliate of the Smithsonian, which is where we are in our performance theater right now, and the WBCM Radio Bristol, which broadcasts from a signal up here in the museum from an exhibit. So I have so much to ask you, but, but let me start with that. Like you're always in a great mood, and you, my, the audience can tell right now. How do you do it, Charlene? And I mean, because, you know, I've seen you, you know, for, I've known you now for like three years and, you know, life changes, life has curveballs. So I've seen you busy, I've seen you super busy, I've seen you not so busy, and you're always like in a giving mood. How do you like, where does that habit come from? Well, I, I love people. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a kind of a people pleaser, but maybe that's not a great thing to say. But, you know, it's... I have a fun job, like, and, and it's fun to talk about, and I'm really proud of it. I'm a Bristol yeah. native, and the work that we've done here has really transformed Bristol in a very positive way. You know, when I was growing up, all of our downtown was shuttered, you know, shuttered businesses. Everything had moved out to the mall, and um, so seeing music literally bring our town together in such a positive way, like, what the you know, there's always something to smile about there. Yeah. But, you know, it's always good to see, you know, friends like you and fellow music lovers and talk about the things that, you know, we do here. Like, it's 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 a happy time and a happy place for me. So. And it's such a beautiful museum. I would encourage anyone to, to visit from all over the country. What is going on special right now? I know you guys always have special, oh. like, exhibits and cool stuff going on. We have a great special exhibit right now, and it was curated by a women-led content team here at the museum. Um, called I've Endured Women in Old Time mm. Music. And it features the lesser known voices of women in old time. And I don't think enough people realize that old time music is the predecessor to bluegrass, it's the predecessor to country music. Mm. And oftentimes, you know, women and the challenges they face to be in the industry at that time was so particularly patriarchal and and difficult for many of them and their male counterparts very often they overshadowed those voices and a lot of times men were telling those stories and that's why but you know women were sort of expected to stay home with the children and many women didn't play music outside of the home because their husbands wouldn't let them mm -hmm. and you know stories like that and just you know, the business of music was so different for them. It was seen, it wasn't seen as something that ladies did to perform in public. Oh, wow. And even churches discouraged it. So um, a lot of women faced those types of challenges. And, you know, a couple of women in particular didn't play music until later in life because their husbands had passed. Yeah. So telling those stories is amazing enough. But this, you know, even though the museum, our team has curated other exhibits in the past, just here in house, um, because we have a lot of traveling exhibits from other places. This is the first one that we've created that will travel to other institutions. Amazing. And that's a really big deal. Absolutely. So when its term is up here, uh, uh, December 31st is the last day, we will be packing it up and moving it, hopefully somewhere else. So we're uh, looking Such at that right now. Story to tell. It is, you know, women's stories are often, like I said, they're overshadowed by, you know, men and a lot of men are telling those stories. So to me, just having those stories told by women and we had a collective group of, you know, our own staff here at the museum, our curatorial team and other old time musicians who are women. Um, people like Amethyst Kia mm -hmm. are in the exhibit and were consulted. Rhiannon Giddens, like Amazing. it's not yeah. just these women of the past, but it's the women that are carrying on the tradition and making it their own. Yeah. Because isn't that what, you know, music is, Absolutely. you know, the evolution of it is really important as well. So there's, ca there's all of that is captured. Yeah. Absolutely, Charlene. And Bristol is such a historic place in so many ways. Just walking the streets, driving through here, you can, you can feel it. This is, of course, uh, where, the, where the big bang of country 
was, right? Just yes. Right around the block? Yes, uh, the 1927 Bristol Sessions right. were recorded here. Yeah. It was over two weeks in August of that summer. Ralph Peer, who was uh, working with the Victor Talking Machine Company at the time, um, he was looking for a new genre to make money off of pretty much because he'd already had some success with you know race records and things like that he had recorded Ernest Pop Stoneman as we, we call him Pop Stoneman here um, in the past and had a little success with a record that he would recorded in New York and usually back then people either went to Atlanta to record or they went to New York to record because there was really nowhere else sure. and all of the record companies just gathered as much music as they could to sell it wasn't like you know there were big labels and uh, not the system that we have today, but uh, uh, Pop encouraged Ralph to come to Bristol to record this music because it was something new and, you know, the hillbilly genre had mm. yet to be kind of discovered. And even though, you know, WSM Radio had been on the air for a couple of years, the Grand Ole Opry had been right. going for a couple of years, it was still all very new. But when the 1927 sessions were recorded, that was known as the Big Bang because there was sort of a, a perfect storm of things that happened. You know, first of all, the Carter family and Jimmy Rogers, those were the, included the first recordings by them. And if you listen to those recordings now, you can see why they became such Absolutely. superstars. Like they sounded like pop stars of their day oh, sure. on I'll those. Upstairs at the museum, you can hear some samples, right? Yeah. Yes, you can. And so you, they sounded like pop star, stars of the time. So the recordings that kind of catapulted the genre into the mainstream. And secondly, you know, it was just the, the process that they used to record the, the sessions was so innovative, uh, innovative, they were, you know, weren't singing into a horn. The Western electric microphone was a new invention, so it made the quality sound much better. And, you know, in addition to, you know, Ralph Peer actually sort of invented the um, royalty system with the way he paid the musicians who played here. You know, he told people he was he would pay fifty dollars for the session, I believe, and then um, they would get royalties on the back end uh -huh. you know, if he if he kept the publishing. So you know, those that system that he used to pay the artists is you know revolutionized the industry. Everybody started doing Absolutely. it after that. So there are many reasons why the the they're not the first country music recordings, but they are very impactful. And even today, you know, artists who come to Bristol you know, talk about, you know, the first, I, I think we have a, 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 a movie upstairs in the um, exhibit space where several artists say the first song they learned to play on guitar was Wildwood Flower, right. you know, by Mother Maybell. And when you think about like guitar players and influential guitar players, her name rarely comes up. And, you know, but here in Bristol, you know, it's, it, it does, you know, people understand, you know, just her style of playing and um, just how influential she really is. And those sessions are by far inarguably the most influential yeah. country music sessions of all time, so. I love it. Well, let's talk about Bristol Rhythm and Roots, which is no secret, it's one of my favorite festivals, like ever. It is so magical, Charlene. I mean, it's like, honestly, so many just become like a blur. And this one, not just for me, but I know for like artists that are friends that have played it, it's just like their eyes sparkle when we talk about it. You that know? makes me feel really, oh that's God. awesome. It is such a special festival, Charlene. We are less than 100 days away from it. Oh my gosh. What does, you said that, like, I'll <laughs> I know, I'm sorry to put that into perspective. Yeah. But, but that's like where the question goes, like what, I'm sure you have a million things on the plate. Like, w w what is on your plate, you know, right now for that festival? Well, you know, in addition to, you know, promotion for the museum and the mm -hmm. radius and all the things that we do throughout the year for that, you know, whenever festival time comes, it is literally just full speed ahead. You know, yeah. right now we're working on the festival app and getting the schedule in there. We released uh, the full uh, day schedule, which isn't, you know, the exact set times, but at least the days that the okay. artists are playing so people maybe can come a day so and they can and figure and out like who's playing when and who they want to see of course the weekend passes always always tell people that's, the, that's best. the best deal absolutely but you know this year we introduced a 70 dollar a day any day pass okay. and you know they used to be tiered it was a different price on friday saturday sunday but this year we just said okay one 
$70 pass. They can use any day they want. Sure. They bring it. It's a printed home ticket. They bring it to the gate for their wristband that'll be, you know, marked for that day. Yeah. And then they're they in the one, yeah. if they can't come all three days. So we did that recently. But, you know, next will be the set times and all of that stuff yeah. and the mobile app will come, go live and things like that. We just got a great, great news that we're going to have a $125,000 presenting sponsor. Fantastic which is huge yes. and you know when you, you look at other festivals those are multi-million dollar festivals our budget isn't anywhere close to that because we're still but it feels like it, better than all those billion dollars you know what i mean it's just a I, I'm, gl I'm really glad that you say that but you know it's at, at some point you know you think gosh will we ever get there but do we ever want to get to that point mm -hmm. you know because we still want to keep it yeah with that you know just hospitable hospitable atmosphere yeah. we want the artists to feel comfortable walking around with the public and going stage to stage and which they do yeah and seeing their friends perform or right. um it's just a really relaxed sort of atmosphere yeah. do you already know like who's gonna play what time and all that i mean you don't have to tell us i'm just curious if you already know we have a pretty good framework now okay. but i'll tell you what always happens and <laughs> a festival our size when we have you know i think 85 ish acts over three days and like you know a hundred some set of sets of music throughout the weekend like the logistics of literally you've got some artists who are pulling into town from a show somewhere else, yeah. somewhere else and you know their bu bus may break down like yeah. things happen exactly. so we try to not release the set times until very close to the festival mm -hmm. because travel times and, sure. and, and itineraries change so and we have so many hundreds of people yeah to like you know their hotel rooms and all the things that we have right. to like sort of arrange for them so we try not to do that so there's not so many surprises when they get here and you know their favorite act may be on a on a different stage at a different time on a different day because right. something happened with their schedule yeah. that rarely happens usually they may be just a little late that day but you know, it's it's happened. We've had you know. <laughs> so the lineup this year, Charlene, it's so great. It's so it's so great every year. You have such a great mix. Um, I mean, Larkin Poe, Bruce Hornsby, Margot Price, uh, the boys Nickel of, Creek, the, yeah, yeah, the boys of Forty Nine Winchester. I could go. I mean, like you said, eighty five plus. Uh, you know, who are you excited for, and what, and, and who have you heard from the community that they're like really excited for? Oh well, uh, you know, I, I think I was telling you this earlier. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited to see. Uh, Bruce Hornsby in yeah. Bristol because I did not know of him his live show until you know pretty couple decades ago I was uh, you know at a, at a festival and he performed and I only knew the one couple songs he had on the radio at the time but seeing that guy live is like I'm just really excited to have that on my home turf like that is gonna be a fabulous performance and of course you know the reunion of Nickel Creek yeah. We were really excited to get That's that because yeah. we couldn't have gotten it <laughs> a few <laughs> years ago, right. but it worked out this time. And then what about the patrons? What were they excited for? What do you hear? Well, a lot of people are really excited about Lark and Poe, which mm -hmm. I am too. Yeah. And, you know, we've got, uh, gosh, you know, 49 is always a favorite, but um, Tommy Prine. Ooh. I think people are really uh, talking and buzzing about him. If you go on our social media yeah, there's just a whole, you know, lots of different levels. And people love Margot. She played here, I, I want to say 2017, 2000. I don't, yeah. I'm not sure the year, but she played in one of our, our bars. And she wasn't a headliner yet. She yeah. had some buzz yeah. and she was great. But that's sort of like when you come to our festival, that's what you'll see. It's like someone this year who will be oh, yeah. playing in one of the, the the smaller venues, that'll be a headliner probably, you know, within three, five years. Okay, so definitely. Well, you've been so good with your time and you have a, a lot of stuff to do. I saw everybody buzzing in the back. But let me leave you with this. Uh, you know, your top memories of Bristol Rhythm and Roots, you know, like the ones that, you know, that, that are going to be on your dreams forever. We've had a lot of great reunion shows. And my, one of my favorite memories of all time you know, we had John Oates come mm. to the festival one year and, you know, he, he kind of oh. put all of his stuff in my office and his wife was with him Friend and they the were show. just warm, beautiful people. And then we did a great uh, Carter family reunion on the State Street stage to close out the festival that year with 
you know, Michelle Malone and Daryl Scott and just all of these amazing people. And then after it was all over, I had been telling him all weekend, I said, you and me, we're going to sing together at some point this weekend. And of course, he hadn't, he didn't know me yet. Like, he hadn't got to know me. This is the first day he's here. And I, I like, bring this to him. And, you know, so he thought I was kind of crazy at first, but it happened. So, like, in my office, there is a YouTube video that exists of us singing Rich Girl, just a little bit of it in my office, like, from that weekend. Amazing. And just, you know, getting to know people, like, you know, it, and know that as much as you love their music all those years and that they're kind, genuine people and his enthusiasm for Bristol when he was here, he said it was the best weekend of music he'd ever experienced. Right. And he and his wife was wonderful and they walked around the whole weekend and took in just as much as they could. Like, to me, that is like a great memory. Right. Amazing, Charlene. If you don't mind giving us the website to get the tickets. BristolRhythm.com. That easy. Get the weekend pass. I t trust me, you will not regret it. Amazing. Oh my gosh, Charlene. So great seeing you. It's so good to see Absolutely. you. Thanks for your time. You're the best, Jamie. Thank you. Thank you.